Susanna Hankler is a foster mother for a children's village in southern Germany. She has seven foster children living with her and raised three of her own. She feels being a children's village mother is her calling. I believe you're an SOS mother all your life. You'll always be one. They say you take your leave of the children, but I don't know if you even can. Eight SOS parents live together with their foster children at the Hohenlohe Children's Village, each family in a house of their own. Children who are unable to stay with their biological families for whatever reason find a new home here. Hey, hey are you nuts? The idea for the SOS Children's Villages originated in Austria and spread around the world. Now there are children's villages on six continents. Suzanne has been an SOS mother for 16 years. The first of her foster children have grown up and are getting ready to move out. How hard will it be for her to let go? She's devoted her life to her own and her foster children. They live together in the Villa Villacula. Her grandson Theo feels at home here and sees Ronja just like a big sister. What was it like for Susanna's son, Johannes, now aged 27, to grow up among so many foster children? As a boy, I'd see another child throw a tantrum or something. It happened often, but it never really got to me. It wasn't my job to react to it in a certain way. If another kid yelled at me, I reacted like a child would and yelled back. Suzanne has been used to having a full house for many years. Now it's starting to empty out. The family's having a farewell party for Kai and Sandra. I've applied to the police and been accepted as a constable candidate. So on Monday, it's right back to school for a whole week. I have to leave and spend five days of the week in La, and on Saturday and Sunday, I'm back here. Samstag, Sonntag, then here. For an important day like this, Susanna's Moritz is on hand as well. Of course, we're happy. It's terrific. I'm a teacher myself and see the problems kids who grow up, their real parents have, deciding what to do when they leave school. This is a huge success. But for now, they concentrate on partying. Aunts, uncles and friends have come to the farewell party. <laughs> on Friday, Sandra celebrated her 16th birthday and on Wednesday she's going to the Zonenhof home. But she won't be gone. She'll definitely come home once a month and for vacations as well as Christmas, Easter, Mother's Day and so on. Sandra's moving into a home for mentally challenged people. There she can live and work like a young adult. In the family, she wouldn't be able to get the kind of support she needs. Sandra and her brother Kai have lived with Susanna since they were toddlers. Now both are leaving the security and familiarity of their children's village family. Um, I'm really proud of my big, big brother. Hey, have you packed your things yet? I've already packed my things, yes. Do I have to sign anything? Yeah. Do you have enough money? I don't think I do. Then we might have to stop by a bank and pick up some money again. That same evening, Kai's turn has come. It'll be the first time he's left his children's village home. He's moving to another unfamiliar faraway town to attend a police academy. You've got your bus pass and your train ticket. He takes leave of his foster mother. Will it be hard for Kai to live 200 kilometers away from home? Yeah, yeah definitely. I think it has to do with the fact that these kids were taken from their parents as little children and now it's twice as hard to say goodbye again. Isn't it? Little Kai never wanted to go far away. 
this is now he's still on vacation. Right, pack your things and go. Yeah, yeah, but you'll come back. I know. But little Kai doesn't always know. It's hard for me when it's so hard for him, because I always worry that he might quit school again or he won't be able to take the frustration. Or he won't be able to take leaving everyone here and his girlfriend in Waldenburg. And he can't go to see her. And I do worry and hope he'll be stable enough to hold up. Susanna has to get back to her work. This is breakfast now. The rest of her foster family is still here. Susanna and Moritz take the remaining kids and their friends on a bicycle tour. Diane, off geht's. Diane we're off. Kids, look at the sheep. Wow, is it beautiful? Oh, is that schön. Oh. Yeah, that's really neat. If you've got fewer kids, you can still go on bike tours like this. Ronja, just ride and don't try any fancy tricks. You all get two scoops. I'd like five. No. Then ten. No. All right, stop it. You're getting two scoops. Now that's enough. Now stop, okay? It's is good. It's yours off. Four scoops of chocolate. No, I said two scoops. What's the big deal about two scoops? Jeremy, you've got two scoops, haven't you? Uh, Moritz, do you know what the kids are saying? It's really crappy. Ask Papa, he always lets us. Now I'm the villain. Ronnie has done so well on her bike. In spite of the minor spats, Susanna and Moritz are a good team and sail through the highs and the lows, even in the children's village family. Not many people are willing to take on a round-the-clock job like this. But Susanna loves her work, heart and soul. If I count my biological children, then I've got seven children who've started in professions and their adult lives. And I hope they'll stay in touch and with each other as well. And I hope that my children are on their way to a good future. And I also hope that things will turn out so that by the time the three younger ones move out, I'll know what I'm going to do. I don't know yet and I don't know what's to come or how things will be, but I have faith that it'll be good. Los wie ein dreigroschen Roman. Hallo! Oh God, oh God, just listen. Sandra, when you've got your shoes off, would you take your bag into the room, please? Sandra's <laughs> come to stay over the weekend. I got homesick really bad. What did you do? Nothing. Nothing? And she's expecting another visitor. Later, Susanna drives to the station. Kai is arriving by train from the police academy to spend the weekend at home. Hello, mother. <laughs> <laughs> it's an odyssey, isn't it? Susanna's happy to have her brood around her again. And amazed. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sandra, do you recognize your brother? He looks good, doesn't he? 
We're about to eat. Wash your hands. You'll have to get changed, Kai. You can't eat like that. Susanna wants the children to be independent. Kai proudly shows us his first car. My mother gave me a loan and I make monthly payments. Because if I'm going to law, it's definitely better to be more mobile and not have to wait forever for the train. I don't want to be late. It's also good to have a little practice driving. As a police officer, you'll need to drive. You're definitely better off if you have a driver's license. With a car, you're more mobile and maybe a bit more grown up. Kai will be a slow, leisurely driver. That's what you think. I'll drive carefully, but test how fast I can go. But you can't drive that car so fast. I can do 170. That's nonsense, Kai. If you drive into something, the car will be kaput and so will you. I don't want that. You can't do 170 in a car like this. Even if you are 18 and responsible for yourself. Hello. Letting go of him or letting children go at all is tough. Because I think when you're 18, you have a lot of freedoms, but you lack experience. And some kids don't take kindly to being offered advice. Though Kai is not really that way. You have to give him credit for that. Kai, make sure to call or text tonight when you get home. Yeah. You also tell us when you get there. Yeah, yeah all right. Now we're on our own again. Now it's quiet. Kai's first trip in his own car. Susanna's life is quietening down, but just a little. Good, let's go in. I've got to get the girls to bed. Okay. Oh, okay.